So we already talked about the website DP Review on a previous post and I said it was a pretty good website for finding information on a good real estate camera. But what we didn't do was go down into the specifics and on a granular level uh, actually talk about the specifications and what they mean. Now this isn't going to be the most exciting video for uh, people not really in the market for a camera right now. But I do think this video will be great for someone that uh, is interested in upgrading their current gear or uh, or looking for a camera for real estate in general uh, because we are going to get fairly specific. I'm going to try to keep this under 15 minutes. We'll see how I do, uh, but we are going to go through stat by stat. So we might as well get started because I'm going to try to keep it within the 15 minute time frame. Uh, just so you guys aren't aren't bored to death uh, with the video and I know that's very long to begin with. So if we go over here, I'm in that DP review website again that we were discussing on a previous post. Great website to get camera reviews. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into camera feature search. I'm going to select a category of camera. Um, and then we're going to go through all the specifications. It doesn't matter what category I'm going to choose right now because I'm going to provide information uh, based on non-interchangeable lens cameras and interchangeable lens cameras while we go through um, the stats. So I'm just going to choose uh, this basic body style here. It's going to provide some cameras for us to, to start the specifications list, list with. And I'll choose the first one, the Fuji Fine Picks. I don't know anything about this camera. Um, it looks like it's so new, it doesn't even have a price point yet. Uh, but this will be just fine because all the reviews on this website will provide a quick specs list as well as full specifications. Or if you're at the store checking out a box, they're going to have similar specifications on the box for you to check out. So what I'm going to do is go through each category step by step and tell you what it means and how that relates to real estate photography. First off, we're starting with the uh, the body type and we know there's two main types of cameras. We have our compact cameras um, and then our interchangeable lens cameras, which will be our digital SLRs, our micro four thirds cameras. Uh, the benefit there obviously is you can take a lens off and put it back on. A compact camera, it is what, you, what it is and you have to look at the zoom range, which we'll talk about here in a few seconds. As we go further down the list, you'll see sensor is here next. And most people put uh, a lot of weight on the megapixels, and that used to be the case five or six years ago, but now any camera has enough megapixels to create great imagery uh, for real estate. That's not really a criteria that you're going to look for unless you're blowing your photos up on the wall of your kids or you're doing other types of photography where you want large poster size photos, then the larger the number in general, uh, the better. The other important factor here is sensor size. And that's probably something that you just gloss over if you don't understand um, what it actually means and the effect that it'll have on your photos. The larger the sensor, in general, again, we're talking in all general generalities here, uh, but the larger the sensor, in general, the better the photograph. Um, a lot of the compact cameras are gonna come with very small sensors. Now there's an upside to that because if you have a small sensor on the camera, then, most of what you take is going to be in focus. The larger the sensor, if you have a full frame digital SLR camera that has a gigantic sensor there, um, you really have to stop the lens down to get everything in the scene in focus. Uh, it is an advantage when you're doing portraiture, you wanna focus on a specific area of a photo because you can blur out the background and get a nice beautiful blurred background and have the, uh, the subject, the foreground in focus. But a lot of times in real estate photography, you want everything in focus unless you're doing more of like a lifestyle photo shoot. Uh, so a good combination um, for real estate, usually, you know, if you know what you're doing with the camera, a large sensor is always going to be better uh, because you can manipulate and control more aspects of your final photograph. Um, if you do have a smaller camera, it's generally going to be easier to get a more in focus shot with a smaller sensor if you don't want to put too much effort into learning photography, which you know I highly recommend doing that whether you're hiring a professional or not. It's part of your business and your marketing and everything that you do. Um, NAR concludes that photographs are the most important aspect for buyers and sellers while they're online searching for real estate. So as we scroll down through, I'm not going to go through everyone. We'll be here for like seven hours, uh, but I'm going to go through the most important ones. Uh, ISO, that is the sensitivity of the sensor on your camera. I recommend taking your real estate photos on a tripod so ISO won't make that big of a difference. However, when I shoot photos of my kids and when I uh, take wedding photographs as well, 
The ISO is important. The higher the number, the more sensitive the sensor is and the darker the environment you can take your photos in. Um, for Again, for real estate, if it's on a tripod, the lower the number, the cleaner the photograph is going to be, um, the end photograph is going to be. But if it's really dark, you can push it up. Uh, but again, in real estate, it doesn't make that big of a difference because you should be shooting on a tripod. Uh, but again, if you want photographs of your kids and family members and things like that, and you'd like to take low light photos, uh, the higher the ISO, the better. Now, this is subjective too, because one camera's 3200 ISO can be totally different from another camera's 3200 ISO. Uh, image stabilization, if you are doing handheld shots, optical image stabilization is a great feature to have. That means that you can hold the camera at a slower shutter speed and you will still get a clear photograph or a clear image. So that's an excellent thing to look for uh, in your lens if you're buying lenses for your digital SLR or in your compact body. Focal length, extremely important. The first number, especially for real estate. This one's not too bad for a non-interchangeable lens camera. It goes down to 24 millimeters, which is uh, pretty good. That's, that's a wide angle lens. It's not super wide, but it's, it's definitely considered wide. Uh, so that one's not a bad option in terms of the width. Now, distortion, you know, the cheaper the camera, the cheaper the lens, usually the more distortion you have, um, but Again, that's up to you to evaluate how much you want to spend. So if you're buying a lens for an interchangeable lens camera and you're checking out lenses online, it'll provide a focal length too. One thing you have to be extremely weary of is when purchasing that lens, you have to know what your sensor size is on your camera. You have to know what this is for interchangeable lens cameras only. This is a 24 millimeter focal length that is 24 because this is a fixed lens camera. But if you go out and if your camera came with a 18 to 55 millimeter lens and you spent less than $1,500, $2,000 on your camera body, then there's going to be what's called a crop factor. And on a Nikon, for an APS-C size sensor, it's 1.5. So that 18 millimeter lens, you need to multiply times 1.5. For a Canon, it's 1.6. So that would take you on an 18 millimeter lens to like almost 28 millimeters, I think, off the top of my head there. That is not that wide of a lens. And for real estate, you definitely want to have the opportunity to go wider if need be. Um, if you have a full frame camera, then you multiply it times nothing. <laughs> or not actually, that would be incorrect because something times zero is zero. You just don't do the multiplication if you have a full frame camera. So it's important to understand your sensor size because that's going to affect the focal length. And we want the lower the number, the better. The lower the number, the better for real estate photos. Uh, autofocus. This is mainly uh, not really for real estate because you don't need a snappy focus, but if you're taking pictures of your children, playing soccer, etc., um, then yeah, you might want multiple types of autofocus so it can help you lock in on your subject easier. Phase detection is by far the best autofocus for moving subjects. Contrast detection is what you're going to find on compact cameras and lower end cameras. Uh, DSLRs will have phase detection and it is vastly superior if you're looking for something uh, to kind of go both ways for family photos and action photos and real estate. Digital zoom, meaningless. You can zoom on your um, iPad program or your desktop or laptop program. Uh, it does absolutely nothing. It means pretty much nothing. So you can skip that one altogether. Screen, an articulated LCD is something that swivels out to other angles. Might be nice to have. Uh, there's some DSLRs, entry level DSLRs that have that too. Um, so that might be nice to look for. I've never had, actually, I, I just, just lied there. I do have a camera, uh, Olympus OMD, that has an articulating screen, and, and I do like it. Uh, as we go down live view, most cameras have live view that are digital cameras. Uh, they'll allow you to see what's being about or what's about to be photographed on the back of the screen. Viewfinder resolution, that's just how clear it's going to be. And now we're getting to some of the photography features. This is definitely important to pay attention to. Maximum aperture, this is how much light the lens will let in. The lower the number, the more light. 
but then again, the less depth of field that you're gonna have for your photographs. If that number is low, like 2.9, you can take photos in a darker environment. But when you focus on something, more of the background is going to be blurred out. So depending on what you want to happen, if you do want a more artistic shot, then that's great. If you don't and you want everything in focus, then you know what, throw it on a tripod, bump up the aperture of the lens to a higher number and let it do its thing because it's going to take a while to take that photograph. Uh, maximum shutter speed, that's for your, and actually eight seconds isn't that long. I take a lot of photos over eight seconds, especially uh, twilight photos. If you're looking for a camera that can do great twilight shots on a tripod, then you probably want something longer than eight seconds. Uh, maximum shutter speed, uh, that's for stopping action. That actually isn't that fast, but not for real estate. These are all great modes that you wanna have on your camera. Aperture priority, shutter priority, and manual exposure mode. Um, if you want to grow and advance with your camera and learn more advanced techniques, then manual exposure mode is absolutely necessary, especially if you wanna do some twilight shots. Uh, the built-in flash with the pop-up flash is not a good option for real estate photos. These flash flashes are not very powerful. Um, they only illuminate 10 to 12 feet in front of them. Uh, so if you are going to do flash photography, we recommend off-camera flash and wireless flash and having multiple units. Uh, so to have that, all you need is a hot shoe, which almost all cameras have a hot shoe. But if you want to build in flash for your quick vacation photos, that, that works fine as well. There's different flash modes, not really that applicable to real estate photography. Metering modes, uh, that's how you wanna meter your scene. Your camera has to determine how much, how much light is in the scene and, and how bright or dark to make the image. And there's different ways of, of having your camera measure the scene because windows and bright things can throw your camera off and make your interior photos darker. So it is nice to have different types of metering modes. Uh, video mode's great, especially on cameras these days. If you're buying a digital SLR camera uh, or you know a compact camera, it's great to have different video modes so you can create more video content, multimedia content for your website. Um, and skipping down through here, the storage, it doesn't matter what storage it takes, just make sure you buy the appropriate card. Uh, battery life is always important. People like a longer battery life. Some people love using AA batteries and rechargeable ones. Uh, most cameras do have a proprietary battery uh, where you'll have to buy more of those batteries and get a charger, uh, which I recommend doing. So again, I know this wasn't the most exciting presentation, but there's a lot of important things that you need to look at when evaluating a camera. And I hope uh, I gave you a little bit more insight or detail into some of those topics. If you have any questions, post below and I will try to answer the questions as promptly as possible. Thank you.